Please go ahead, sir. Okay. So, good evening, everyone. On behalf of SOCHAM, I have great pleasure in welcoming Sri Aske Jindal, Chairman of National Council on Commodity Markets, SOCHAM. I also welcome all the experts and our senior members of SOCHAM, Sri Rajiv Talwar. He will be just joining. Mr. Narendra Madhva, Managing Director, SKI Capital, Professor Saurabh Agarwal, Indian Institute of Finance, Mr. Sivan Sumaita from MCX, Mr. Vikram Dhawan, Nippon India, Mr. Gaurav Mathur, Safe Gold, Mr. Samir Patil from BSC, Mr. Naveen Mathur from Anand Rati, and Mr. Soma Sundram from World Board Council. Great welcome to you, sir, all of you. And uh, I also welcome all the participants here, those who are attending the webinar. And uh, most of them, they are aware that regularly we are organizing knowledge-based discussions on these topics. And today it is on post-COVID investment opportunities in various asset classes, rebalancing portfolios. Sir, we have heard from many of the experts in the past that how to balance the portfolios. And now the turn is how to rebalance it after this pandemic. And we have so much, you know, a strong panel of our experts and they will, you know, deal every aspect of this important subject. I now request three. I would also request all the participants to please write their question to us so that it can be, you know, addressed well in advance with by all the speakers, whoever is concerned with your question. To kindly conduct the proceedings. Thank you, sir. Thank you, everyone. Thank you, Razora ji. Thank you for a warm welcome to all the participants from SHM and as on my own behalf also. Good evening to all of you. As we all know, COVID-19, the mother of all disruptions. Serious pandemic, but we have been able to deal with it until now reasonably well. But it is still not over. So many big changes has taken place during this, which will none of us imagined what kind of changes they will be and what will be the ultimate outcome of it but now we have reasonable idea how we are going to spend the rest of our life and rest of our life what i mean to say is that it could be that always we'll be having a mask with us gloves with us and sanitizer with us rest of our life it, it may be possible that we'll have to deal with it always Friends, so many changes and big changes and same applies to our investment also, which is an important aspect of our life. Investment plays very important role in everybody's life and it needs to be dealt with very, very carefully. So that is why this conference today, uh, we have a panel of distinguished expert speakers to deliberate on different aspects of the subject today. Our focus of discussion today mainly will be on investment in gold, real estate, mutual fund, equity, commodity, and other financial instruments, and how to rebalance investment portfolios along all these. I was thinking which one to go for first. Again, gold came to my mind first. So let's start with gold. Uh, gold, as you know, it it always comes very handy in such difficult times and this time again it proved its history that in the last 6000 years also and today also gold is the most important thing which brings back our confidence which helps us to maintain our sanity and this is the commodity which anybody of any age would like to have a piece of it in his possession. Mr. I would like to start with Mr. Soma Sundram. Mr. Soma Sundram, as you know, most of you, he is Managing Director of World Gold Council of India, has 27 years of experience across diverse industries, including FMCG and banking sectors mainly. And just now, before starting, I was asking him why he chose World Gold Council, why he chose gold business as his profession so i would like to know that also 
for all of our investors and how much gold what can we do with this gold which we are holding mm -hmm. and uh, how it is better than other asset classes i would like to have your perception for our investors and i would request you if possible to give them something as a takeaway from this conference today so that they mm -hmm. go happily and more enriched with knowledge on gold from today mr somasandram please thank you very much sir can you hear me yes yes okay great now um, actually my task has been made very easy because just a couple of weeks ago we from the world gold council released a very specific very short report called the relevance of gold as a strategic asset for india it's uh, available on our website i'm very happy to send it to asocham to forward it to people it's very easily readable it explains why gold should be part of a portfolio now if you i will just make two three points and then I'll probably uh, uh, hand it back to you if one is institutional investors across the globe if you really were to look at uh, since 19 uh, uh, last uh, 30 years they have actually increased the share of non traditional assets which is you know equities and bonds they have moved on to non traditional assets that has increased from 7% in 1998 to 26% in 2018. Gold is very small part, but this will enter. Uh, I mean, we are working as a council to make sure that gold enters this portfolio in a big way. Now, closer home, if you really see what we did was we analyzed what has been the return in INR terms. This is a very important thing we need to know. In INR terms, till December, this is, this figure is still December, so it would have gone up now if you take the current price. The price of gold has increased by an average of 14.1% per annum since 1973. Since the withdrawal of gold standard, the gold price in INR, in Indian rupee, has gone up by 14.1% year on year. So that tells us why gold is a very preferred asset class. We also did lots of analysis and that report does uh, deal with it. We have even said if a pension or fund in India, you know, we have lots of pension funds, etc. If they invest anywhere between 6% and 17% in gold, had they invested in six six percent or seventeen six, between six and seventeen percent in gold, the return would have been risk adjusted return would have been higher. It would have been, you know, when I say it would have been higher, it's not a negligible, uh, um, you know, increase. It would have been, uh, you know, it would have been of significance. Okay, so the. The clear thing is, obviously, gold has to form part of our portfolio. You got to hold it. Now, coming back to India, now you you asked a very specific question, because India in India, what happens is the first asset class, the moment you come out to, uh, of the poverty line and go into the middle class, the first asset class you access is gold. So here, the situation is a little different for the households, but when it comes to people who have gold. How do I use the gold now? You know, the prices are going up. I don't want to do anything. I think there are other experts, like I would uh, look at uh, the exchanges to explain to people how they could, you know, if they have a certain quantum of uh, gold at home without selling it, how can they actually, uh, you know, work on the price in the exchanges? I'm sure there are options and other stuff, which, uh, 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 you know, MCX and BSC will uh, probably explain. Um, but otherwise, I'll just stop by saying, otherwise, there are schemes like uh, the uh, gold monetization um, scheme. I think people should start learning it and probably start earning from gold to the extent gold is in surplus in their hand, but not exit gold. So the, I would leave it and then probably pick it up as we go along. Sir. Thank you. So, so I have a question attached to it. When you say 14.1% per annum since 1973 average return on gold, 
what would be, what would be the second second best nearest could it be equity or something else yeah yes it is equities it is equities um, equity yes and gold but, people prefer but, because it is ease of investing also in gold and see when you talk of 1973 sir i'm i'm uh, this is just an analysis of the return, okay? But when you are saying, why do people access gold uh, or buy gold in India? It is essentially because it is the most easily accessible. We have 400,000 jewelers who are spread across the nook and corner of this uh, country. They are therefore able to, you know, provide this access very, um, very easily. Clearly, easy access to gold is one reason. Uh, also, if you see between 73 and, uh, you know, the time when we opened up, I think the stock market investing was very, very um, exclusive, uh, uh, you know, work. It was not uh, as broad based. Even today, we, we have a lot of ground to cover, but it wasn't even as broad based as it is now. Therefore, you know, gold tend, gold and real estate tended to be the assets of preference in those days. Gold and equity both performed very well over a long average, but at the same time, they have inverse relationship. Gold works better when there is a trouble, where is turbulence, and equity works better when there is stability. The nature is totally different. Yes, sir. It is. Uh, I, I mean, I would. Uh, you are absolutely you made valid points. I would not say that equity is, uh, you know, uh, uh, work only when there is uh, stability. In fact, uh, if you ask a real investor, I'm sure there are some on the panel, they will say it is only when there is turbulence, you should choose the right one. That's when you make your maximum money. So every asset class has its positives and uh, negatives. But all that we as the World Gold Council say is, look, gold is like an insurance. It, it must form part of portfolios to make the portfolio more robust, uh, and less volatile. Uh, but we, uh, we wouldn't obviously say that, you know, it is, better than this or that it has a great role as part of the portfolio so and, that is uh, why so I not say that can, my gold you should you... invest in equities that kind of stuff it is not gold versus yeah. equity it is gold and equities and bonds and other assets absolutely absolutely we agree with you all of them required for diversification and for making a stable portfolio but can you throw some light on gold ETF? Yes, uh, as I said, uh, I'm keeping it uh, specific to India. Globally, as you know, ETF inflows are seeing the highest inflows uh, as we speak. They have touched lifetime highs. Uh, wow. Europe and US actually, you know, they have crossed even 3,000. And uh, the inflows are even higher than what central banks have bought in the last two years. Actually, that's very, uh, this year, the six months, inflows into ETF. Uh, in the US have been even higher than what central banks have bought in the last two years. And central banks have bought the maximum in the last two years ever since the withdrawal of a gold standard. So you can imagine how much is flowing into India. Coming back to India, of course, we have uh, we had 14. Right now, I think it is about 11 ETFs. We have uh, we have about 20, to, uh, 20 tons. Uh, that's the size of our ETF. It was at one stage 38 tons or 40 tons, but it had shrunk between 2000, particularly 2012 and 2016. It started shrinking. Uh, it has a long, very long, uh, uh, you know, space to grow. Clearly, ETFs has to grow um, because that provides a lot of liquidity and uh, as maybe even allows funds to invest in you know to broad base their portfolio to invest in gold as an alternative asset class it is only etf and unless there is liquidity in this market that's not going to grow you know uh, nobody is going to you know no mutual fund is going to invest in you know hard uh, gold they i mean they will want etf so for us we need to look at what is to be done to improve the etf market all right thank you very much so you see big potential in etf and you you want you would like to see Indian investor going towards ETF. They should consider it more. Absolutely. Very good. Thank you. Thank you very much for so much of uh, information about gold. And uh, this is the latest one. But I would like to know if you have 100 rupees 
investable with you where will you put this hundred rupees in what all areas gold and uh, mutual fund and uh, equity and what else and what percentage are you asking me sir yes sir because uh, uh, we, uh, we, we want to follow you <laughs> I, first of all i would never give an advice because I, we are not financial advisors we just speak about the positive attributes of gold and we will only go to the extent of saying depending on your risk appetite whoever it is a portfolio with gold is stronger than a portfolio without gold i think we will not cross anything beyond this to suggest how people should use their money so i am sorry i can't really give you the uh, you know and i am not an ideal investor let me also make it very clear in this i am not an ideal investor i make my mistakes uh that everybody does mr som but we really appreciate uh, what you say and uh, we respect your uh, saying that you would not like to go beyond this perfect thank you now i would like to know uh, from my friend mr sivanshu mehta who is head of bullion mcx exchange has been with the exchange over 16 years he designed their products and he has great experience in commodities especially gold and silver where he is interacting with the whole indian market day in and day out shivanshu ji what is your take on this gold uh, investment for in our investors and i would like you also to give them some take away a real advice how they should handle their money because their money is hard earned money and i would like them to get get some something to how they can create a alpha by your advice cannot hear you must be muted your yes, advice yes, is confidential <laughs> no, no no not quite so firstly uh, thank you jindal saab for a rather elaborate uh, introduction Uh, not not even required. I think uh, firstly, I must congratulate Asocham for bringing uh, constantly, you know, uh, these topics of uh, current uh, contextualized uh, relevance. Uh, it it really uh, uh, serves very well. Uh, I think uh, while uh, Som has really said a lot, and in the epilogue, you have already uh, set the context. I will add these following points. You know, the like they say, commits the man, uh, commits the hour, and then commits the man. so gold in this period of uh, turmoil geopolitical pandemic related in an environment which is almost negative interest rate monetary easing across the world these are idyllic conditions for an asset like gold to yet again prove its metal i think it has you know before the lockdown the prices which we used to see 39000 odd and this journey of close to 50000 as a leading uh, bullion exchange uh, it reflects firstly in our turnover in our participation uh, last year like i mentioned we were 102% up in turnover in gold and we continue to be about uh, 24 25% higher in the bullion turnover in these three months why is that so partly because the theme of today's session is that how and you know uh, retail investors can find organized ways to invest in gold digital ways to invest in gold accumulate gold on the screen do weighted average uh, pricing lock in different prices through liquid contracts which exist on the exchange so we have seen all these things unravel it reflects in the numbers you see uh, the portfolio aspect which you are referring to is actually an empirical reality it's an empirical truth that they say that a portfolio which has commodity derivatives managed futures to an extent of 20% of the total like som said it uh, you know and you rightly pointed out alpha so it it actually gives a better return uh, than singularly oriented portfolios i'll i'll put it this way and it reduces the beta it reduces the volatility so uh, you know these two things together and what did you see in the lockdown why was it that there was uh, the comex prices uh, uh, running away and uh, you know there was an unavailability due to physical constraints of the gold and the lvma represents the physical uh, you know market 
yet there was a tremendous appetite and people rushed to the futures and thereby creating that disparity and for for a long time etfs uh, remained at a premium uh, just after lockdown uh, of course vikram is there he'll he'll throw more light on it but the 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 you know home experience which i can share with you is that we have launched retail products for very this this very purpose one is the silver 1 kg bar and it is no strange coincidence that during this period it has seen 10 and a half tons of 1 1 kg of silver bars being delivered on mcx platforms again retail appetite during during the month of march as we are all aware silver was at a premium never seen before why because of retail interest the 1 gram gold contract which we have launched nowhere in the world does it exist deliverable 1 gram gold petal 14100 plus coins have been delivered so these are all indicators of retail interest and the changing uh, style of retail investment like you said we'll be working with masks and and sanitizers and maybe gloves uh, you said some time back yes it is very much possible so the differentiator between bullion and jewelry between asset and a wearable uh, you know ornament will further become evident upon all of us i feel uh, you know today we have gorav here uh, from safe gold he'll tell you uh, digital gold in india a top 3 4 companies they are doing around 300 kgs a month sir have was it ever uh, uh, heard of before digital gold and this is again uh, enabled via exchanges so uh, you know uh, some companies they are taking deliveries from mcx and they are in a way helping digitize it because then it is being distributed to their clients and they go and exchange it in the in the jeweler shop as in when they want through through the dmat process of the exchange so electronic holding electronic accumulation liquid order books of the exchange different product portfolios accumulating it holding it elect electronically this is probably going to be the way forward and any product which is designed around that will probably see success uh, so i'll uh, that, that is the initial remarks i have to make sir thank you but tell me one thing did exchange through its research department knew that there is going to be a pandemic coming <laughs> no sir no sir i i, I you have those uh, six sense qualities sir i i, <laughs> I don't think no we... and and did you know that if pandi pandemic comes there will be a 25% increase in gold prices <laughs> did you imagine uh, no you i imagine? did not the suddenness may of it may i answer while shivansu sure, or sure, sure, anybody nobody can uh, say that but there was always a discussion that in times of crisis and the crisis could be anything we would not have de defined the crisis but we always speak about gold saying in times of extreme crisis that's the one which will save you and um, so that is known uh, so sivanshu i just helped you sorry go ahead <laughs> sure uh, it's very is, very important that... for friends to help when jindal sahab is in the mood of giving googlies so no no it's always those 6000 <laughs> that is the 6000 year old history gold has always during crisis it has increased leaps and bounds and it has helped uh, demonetization same thing happened now i would like to invite mr gorav mathur managing director safe gold digital gold india private limited uh, by the name of safe gold they are doing this thing uh, the company has digital gold brand by the name safe gold and mr gorav himself has 30 oh they are working with so many banks and other firms and he has 15 years experience in private equity etc worked with manapuram and jubilant all so vast experience gorav ji please share your experience with us and we would like to know your perception on digital digitalization of gold and how is the future of digital gold from here onwards Jindal sir, thank you. Uh, thank you for this opportunity. Um, I think, in terms of our experience, we're a relatively young company. We've been around for about three years. In uh, that three years' time, we've seen a very positive uh, reception for digital gold. And I should just clarify that digital gold is uh, actually physical Mr. gold. Mr. Gora, why we cannot see you? Mr. Gora, why we cannot see you? Sorry, I'm. checking am i visible so uh, wait let me put yeah, my yeah, camera on and no and no? no, only you are visible very much visible gorav you can carry on yeah all right carry okay. on please okay no problem 
So I was just clarifying that many people mistake digital gold for something that is not a real product. They think it's a digital token of some sort. This is actual physical gold, which is stored in a vault and it's just sold over digital channels. Um, it's become very popular, especially in the last one year when you've had many more people buying it in substantial quantities. Because the main benefit for digital gold is it's accessible in convenient places. So we have partnered with some banks. We have partnered with many brokerage firms. We are on many of these mobile wallets like your like your phone pays and MobiQuicks and things like that. We are on online websites. Some, in fact, video games also give distribute digital gold to their winners as opposed to distributing money. So many places uh, we make it easily accessible in uh, across many different platforms. And we think that in the last uh, last two years, almost 80 to 90 million consumers in India have bought digital gold in some way, shape, or form. 80 to 90 million consumers. Ah, मतलब अभी 8 9 crore. Now a lot of these लोगों ने 50 रुपए का भी खरीदा है, 100 रुपए का भी खरीदा है. So we've made it divisible. So like shampoo went into sachets. So earlier shampoo was in bottles and they put it in one rupee sachets. We've made gold also that you can buy it in low ticket amounts. So everyone buys gold in India. So power so, of fintech. Power of fintech is a good way to describe it, Jindal Sabir. Perfect encapsulation. Mm -hmm. So that has made it accessible. Everyone used to buy gold in any case. It's not some new product. As you said, it's a 6,000 year old product. The other thing is in times of crisis, the returns uh, also look good. One other data point I just throw in the mix, put out there for people to look at. We've gone and looked at international gold prices going back 100 years, 120 years. So in US dollar terms, if you take a you know 20 year, 50 year, 100 year kind of time frame, gold gives you about 5% a year in US dollar terms. Add to that, the Indian rupee historically has depreciated 3-4% against the US dollar. And of course, there'll be different periods. So if you do, now look at gold in 50 year, 100 year kind of time frame, that will give you maybe 9-10% in Indian rupee terms. And of course, as Som said, since the 70s, it looks much better. And the other cut we've done is uh, a part, if you take five year periods, 10 year periods, ever since Indian equities data started, apart from the period 2004 to 2019, Gold has never underperformed equities in India uh, over any five or 10 year period. It's only bit the last five years effectively between 2014 to 19 where gold was underperforming equities. So we think that has now got highlighted again in the recent past. And that's why many more people are coming to digital gold. And I would say we are a bridge to uh, people trading on the exchange. So for example, we get a lot of mass market customers. So during the lockdown, when we couldn't buy from refiners and we couldn't buy from banks, then you know we were buying it in a big way from the exchange and, and thanks to MCX that that was still open. So it, so, it, it, so it allowed us to function continuously. And even today, we sort of maintain some kind of mix. We buy some physical and as it comes close to delivery, then we also take delivery on the, uh, on the exchange. And we see ourselves as democratizing gold. Because, uh, you know, one of the questions you'd ask Som was why do so many people buy gold? I think we just help that you've always had more jewelers than bank branches. I think the last RBI statistics said 95,000 bank branches and there's some somewhere between 300, 400,000 jewelers. So it's more as so gold is much more accessible in the physical world. We are just trying to now make that uh, make take that accessibility and make it as accessible in the digital world as well and uh, you take it across to consumers. And our aim is right now, we started as a simple investment service in gold, but we want to build the full ecosystem. You should be able to deposit it with the bank under the GMS so you can get interest on gold. Uh, and we've already got redemption networks with jewelers. So Joby Apka Digital Gold, hai, you can go and exchange it for jewelry with a partner jeweler. You can use it as collateral for loans from a bank. So we're trying to add as much functionality as possible uh, to physical gold uh, in a digital format. Gaurav, when did digital gold became operational in India? First time. First time it started in about 2016-17. So about three, four years. Ji. And you see big potential here? Yes, potential is there. Um, of course, rising prices help grow it substantially. So yes, we think that we should be able to grow at least you know 15 or 20 times from the current size. These are the, the pros. These are the pros. What are the cons? The biggest con, which many customers also tell us, is that you don't get the physical metal in your hand right away. When people buy gold, still the vast majority of people still like to feel physical metal in the hand. So I think that is the biggest challenge that... Uh, that but then uh, it is not practically possible that you want to eat your cake and have it to 
but that is still the customer feedback we get you asked me the con so this is the number one issue that we get people say up 0.1 gram ka hame kyun nahi de sakte ya 0.2 grams ka bana dijiye chhota coin banaiye that is the kind of or rather that is the most common complaint that we get the Chiram other ko microscope lana padega dekhne ke liye usse true 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 all so, right very good thank you samir ji mr samir patel chief business officer bsc limited uh, 2003 when i first time met him i met him he was representing mcx and he was selling gold product electronic gold product online gold product at that time and today he is looking after bsc business but i remember him as a golden boy from mcx always whenever his name comes to my mind it comes as mcx gold boy samir ji share your experiences with us now you have 17 years of online trading of uh, gold experience and other experiences how do you look at gold in today's scenario i understand that during covid big changes have taken place uh, behavioral changes from investor point of view investors they are not the same investor before as they were before covid they are different now how they are different and how do you see the potential of this business post covid thank you jindal ji thank you so much thanks for remembering me <laughs> uh, in fact uh, those were those good days when we all you know started mcx together with a with a full bang and full flow in fact i remember uh, in 2008 i don't i don't think anybody here recalls what we are talking of when i had come to delhi to meet you in person for that 150 tons of physical delivery in silver in one single contract <laughs> so, uh, so those are those good old days uh, well well in fact uh, a good question uh, jindal ji things have changed a lot and there's a drastic change in the behavioral pattern uh, change in behavioral pattern rather in fact if you see pre if you compare both uh, pre and post covid in fact in uh, january nobody thought that we uh, when everybody you know in, in the month of jan and feb all business heads and the ceo sit uh, sit should sit together stack their heads and uh, discuss targets in the month of april may june for the next quarter and nobody thought that the next quarter you will spend your entire day at sitting at home and working from home but now that's that's a reality now and as you rightly said i don't know about the designer shirts and trousers but your uh, gloves your sanitizers and your masks is going to be a part of your lifestyle at least for a couple of years to come and uh, and to be very specific uh, Uh, gold gold is hundred uh, percent imported in India. Uh, the prices of gold. Gaurav touched on a very very good point. Rather, when he was comparing the equities and the commodities, you know, especially gold, and uh, he said uh, since two thousand fourteen to two thousand nineteen, uh, it was uh, equities that was outperforming the uh, gold. The reason being was gold was uh, in fact staggered in the particular range from say thirteen hundred to fourteen hundred dollars per try out, and it was only the rupee dollar factor. Which was appreciating, and rupee from 63 to 75 today. It's an enormous uh, increase in rupee, and that is affected the increase and return of gold price in India. And it is not gold single-handedly. Uh, it, it is, and uh, Swam rightly said, in gold prices have increased in India in rupee terms, and that is thanks to the Indian rupee depreciating from 63 almost to uh, 75, 75 and a half. So this is a major, major reason why gold prices. Have uh, 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 gained that return in India, but uh, uh, touching on to the most important fact, uh, factors, what has been very very interesting, what we have witnessed is in the last couple of months, from from when the lockdown started, from uh, March till now, what we have seen is we have seen a new breed of investors coming into the markets. Now these are the millennials. They they are the investors. For them, they have no liking towards gold. They have no like liking towards uh, uh, any any you know you might we might talk about you know uh, this six thousand old uh, tradition of investing in gold and all but if they have a lakh rupees if they have an option of investing in gold or an iPhone most of them will prefer an iPhone rather because the the entire investing pattern has changed even uh, and if you if you look at the uh, number of accounts that in, that have been opened for the large ten. Uh, Members that we are talking today, which contribute to almost 60% of the volume of the equity volume, there are other volumes that's also in India have increased. Or in fact, on BAC, my UCC unique line uh, count is increased from 4.21 uh, to 5.61 across. Uh, 
so this is a huge huge number in this uh, last four to, uh, four to five months so this is this is a uh, enter ready now for us there are two, various two businesses two businesses are working one is during the covid period one is reliance and second is exchange reliance has collected so much of money and so has exchange is done carry on please yeah thanks thanks so, much. so uh, vikram is smiling <laughs> so uh, but uh, nevertheless so this this was this was encouraging for us and uh, uh, the, the the way the changing the patterns have changed everybody used to look at you know long term investments you say six, one year two years down the line down the line uh, means you had gold pre uh, covid and post covid it is it, 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 the you know, indian price is from 42000 it has gone uh, as high as 40000 48000 uh, per 10 gram so this is uh, this kind of returns in such a small time is never heard of so now uh, moving forward this new millennials they are getting used to such kind of volatility such kind of uh, opportunity such kind of returns in this market so when when i uh, would go forward and say now the entire uh, logic of a long term and a short term has changed because this kind of returns of were never un were actually unheard of and even the large uh, equity exchanges and the indices in india look if you look at the kind of movements and the volatility and the returns they have uh, given from the lows to the highs it has been tremendous and uh, hence uh, i i personally think uh, the entire uh, 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 liking uh, or uh, not liking but uh, the uh, uh, prospect of looking at uh, the, uh, as investing in gold is changed but i would also like to throw some light over here uh, uh, we have uh, bse recently has launched the options on goods in gold mini contract and we are doing reasonably well uh, in fact uh, fairly well we completed a uh, de delivery cycle also we, it is just a one month of launch so an options on goods is a very good product it minimizes your risk uh, your a uh, cost on the commodity transaction tax which is a huge cost here so when you enter into a futures market you pay an initial margin you pay a mark to market and you have to take so care of so many things so here in this case you pay a small premium and, and at the end of the uh, uh, expiry you can avail physical delivery as well so this again has become a very good option we are doing sizable volume almost about the uh, 20 25% market share in just one month and we will uh, uh, make uh, and in, in fact sir uh, Uh, we have uh, issued guidelines for india good delivery also so we started the discussion 2005 at last in 2020 when we are 19 when pis uh, <laughs> issued the guidelines bsc was the first exchange rather to follow those guidelines and issue guidelines on good delivery so uh, in the near future you will see a uh, indian refinery which which uh, meets all the preferred uh, guidelines can come forward and take uh, produce their delivery on the exchange as well so this will be a win win for an indian uh, investor in real term i congratulate world gold council bsc and mcx you have really done tremendous work for the gold business in india and i remember 20 years ago lbma came and they held a forum here lbma forum 2004 they yes they came they did it they went away and it was like everything in their hand now everything is in our hand in this business so the things have changed totally now uh, i would like to call in professor uh, dr saurabh agarwal uh, is a committee member of shm also and at the same time is principal at iif college of commerce and management studies at indian institute of finance he has done his doctorate on a on a program called a goal programming portfolio section model so portfolio section model programming he has done his uh, work of doctorate and has been uh, this has been done at the fms fms famous fms at university of delhi dr saurabh i would like to know your views on the gold business in the current scenario and you are a expert on portfolio programming so what is your take on it uh, thank you shri jinder ji for giving me the uh, opportunity and i also thank ashucham and also the all the esteemed uh, speakers uh, i have a small powerpoint presentation maybe i'll take 5 7 minutes to show all the ppts um, as on the gold you know i just uh, uh, plotted the gold chart and i see uh, i saw that it has already reached near its peak you know normally 
we tend to talk about some asset when it has already gone really high i feel those uh, listeners who are listening to this meeting they must see what is the potential to rise in another you know how do we see simple demand and supply if we the fear is going to increase then gold is going to rise if fear is not going to increase then i don't think so uh, the gold is going to uh, you know uh, rise and that's that's the reason why i have always prefer and my phd thesis was also on uh, equities so yeah i press are, are you able to see my screen yes we are able to see hello yes doctor we can see it you can see the uh, okay the webinar is written there okay thank you yes so, so first 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 ppt which it shows is practically when the ipo came and and i say not reference to any particular company but when the ipo of uh, infosys came nobody wanted to subscribe it and practically if you see something like 10000 rupee invested then would have become almost something like 2.5 crores today so where nobody is looking at i think that's where uh, the perspective should be in terms of investment now let, mm -hmm. let us look at some companies which have been the biggest wealth creators and i always say when you are investing your hard earned money always look at those who have been good performers we do it with employees we do it with everything and if you see even in today's time my last slide shows ril it has still been and if you just look at their their uh, uh, cagr percentage it is just 24% 25 so that's the kind of returns equities has created why i prefer equities to gold you know again uh, although the entire discussion is that equities help mm. the corporate india you know it puts the wealth in the hands of the people who are going to give jobs who are going to work for the development of the nation these are the companies theek theek Mm -hmm. now if you want to go into the fastest wealth creators these are some of the companies which have multiplied you can just see the price appreciation x times and even in today's time even post covid if you see these companies britannia every day you see 4 to 5% what you earn in fixed deposit if, if somebody is tracking you will see you can earn 4 to 5% in one day in in such, such uh, in a company like britannia or bajaj fins these are strong fundamentally strong companies so what i recommend is during the post covid 19 uh, while there are many philosophies but value investment is the right thing to do whether it is any asset class what 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 does value investment say value investment is saying try to find any undervalued asset but our mind works in the opposite way you know why our mind works opposite behavioral finance richard thaler who got the nobel prize he says if you if i eat a expensive medicine i feel you know uh, that it will cure me better so so that's the idea you know whenever we are investing if we buy something which is expensive however to to create value you yeah, have yeah. to work the opposite way for example the tatas when they started they started in chinch pokli buying buying a bankrupt firm you know that's how uh, the mithil steel industry they started with starting with bankrupt uh, you know buying bankrupt steel firms so so value investment lots lots of research and patience is required money can't be made overnight so first anything you are going to buy do you understand the business does it offer any competitive advantage the management who is running it can you trust it and finally does the price make sense these are applicable to all the asset classes which have been discussed uh also look at the unbeatable moats why you know jindal ji when he started he said reliance has made money the reason is it has got into an unbeatable moat today i'm talking i'm using jio uh, fiber uh, connection which is there similarly coca cola gillet people are going to shave identify unbeatable moats those businesses which are going to survive and which are going to be needed such turbulent times are are required uh we i also you know some research was done by me and we we, we tested the hotel stocks and what we saw was through that event study on 11th of march when the pandemic was declared immediately the prices went down our sensex went down about 22% but after that it went up and significant gains can be made so practically when everybody is rushing out i think shm members and other esteemed players that's the time to get into it and everybody loses money i can give the example in covid 
even you know warren buffet whom i'm i'm quoting he has lost almost 50 billion dollars he has sold all his stake in us airways and it's a big amount for him also because his total cash reserves are about 130 billion dollars uh, if you see so but it, there is opportunity to make money if you see he invested this much and he he in gecko shares he made 1.3 million so through value investment over time period you can make a lot of money uh, Suzlon is another very good example, a case study. The company was doing good, but then it took a lot of debt. So debt, you know, value investment says look at companies which have less debt. Okay, switching cost should be high. For example, if once I have taken a DTH, I'm not going to switch. These are some of the ways to identify unbeatable modes. How much intangible assets any organization has? So basically, the Buffett's philosophy is look at these eight points. Does your investment have these eight points? Then you should go ahead for go ahead for it. Otherwise, not. There are many other filters that have been created. One is very popular. Was the guru of Warren Buffet was Graham, and he said, look at earnings yield and the ratio of stockholders equity. If the promoters of the company hold a large portion of the asset, then you should you should tend to invest in it. It should be the returns given by your equity should be twice of a triple A rated bond. Now, these are some of the rules which, and we applied it on Indian stock market. He said, you do not hold it forever. Similarly, gold, if you keep on holding forever, you might lose out of the probability to earn return. He said, keep it for three years to five years, up to you earn 50% return. All the slides I've shared, so I'm not going to read uh, this thing. We, what we did was we found, you know, we did an empirical study on Indian markets in, in this COVID period. And, and we, we took just five, you know, these five parameters which were identified by Graham and from, we found these are the companies which are common in all of them. And we saw Arthi Industries, one of, the, one of the greatest wealth creators. There are other companies also. And this is the portfolio return table. You know, with this, using these filters, in one year you could have earned this much. But if you hold it for two years, the returns become negative. So actually holding period sensitivity of results we saw. So, so actually any asset class you buy, how much long you're going to hold on to it is also very important, which I think the investors and the participants should uh, see. Uh, these are some of the results. We saw almost uh, our, our, our model working in eight out of 11 years, which is very good. Uh, there are certain trainer ratios which are there, uh, which we also worked out and we observed that yes, out of six years, even in terms of risk to return ratio, uh, our, our uh, portfolios did good. There are many other filters. For example, Scross is a very big scholar. He said that you should invest in companies which are available below the book value. All this data is available on websites like Money Control, ET Money. So, I mean, you can download the Excel sheet. All, all the listed stocks have little debt. You know, specifically post-COVID, debt is going to play a big role. And what Reliance has done, I think other companies are also doing through rights issue and other issues. I think that's that's a very important thing. Uh, if never he felt you should ignore uh, services industry and that way McDonald will never come into his filter. This grand black filter I have seen works very well and it works, it's focused on two, two uh, things, higher earnings yield. So if a company is doing very, uh, you know, earnings yield are going to increase and secondly, higher return on capital. And I can tell you one company is IPCA. You know, November, December onwards, we started having news of virus spreading and IPC exports a lot. And if somebody had invested, his wealth could have almost been doubled in, in such company. Now, even leave that return on capital. Another company I can give an example is Deepak Nitride. You know, if you look at the, they are the way they have grown and their earnings are growing. So we have to use these filters, you know, uh, earning money in stock market is or any other asset class. It, it has requires a lot of research. And these are just examples, you know, uh, just to give an idea, there, there is a NEFS filter which says take low P stocks, uh, growth rate in EPS should be about 7 to 25%. So free cash flow should be there with the company. So these are some of the, you know, criteria. Lynch, you know, he created slow, identify slow goers. You know, those who will grow slowly, it is expected will, will fall down. Uh, so cyclical industries, uh, which are now going up, identify those. There are many others, some say one should go in for family run businesses, while Charlie Munger, who, who, who worked closely with Buffet, he said, no, family run businesses, if there's family feud, 
it can drain out the business uh, you know there are many chart patterns also i'm just showing you if you plot it for gold you know it will appear similarly and what charles dow who was the uh, editor of wall street journal he said that one should look at when it is rising you know this is known as upward rising trend enter any market here if you enter here you are going to make losses and then it goes up so these are some trends you know if you enter at the top there is something called a head and shoulder also if you see this kind of pattern you see market goes down normally a lot of people 99% of people end up losing well because they enter up here because once any asset class makes money everybody starts talking about it and that's the time when retail investors get into it and they lose money so so you know uh, apart from this there are many predictive stock uh, technologies and and charts like bollinger bands they can actually predict you know if it is here it will go up to here so always use that you know to 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 book your profits uh, at the right time uh, there is a lot of empirical work going on uh, journal of finance is the mecca of finance what we refer to in academics uh you know saurabh ji saurabh ji saurabh ji saurabh ji uh how much yeah. more time is required for this two minutes two more minutes, two minutes. that be okay. okay yeah all right so so they say that using these techniques you could make money also you know there are lot of news coming in for example this news came sbi and itc actually increased after this news uh macd and other you can use apply these tools on commodities uh there are many other schemes available you can which we can see uh coming on to yeah in terms of mutual funds i would like to attract your attention to debt mutual funds you know the equity funds were giving 22% 25% but specifically post covid this is the area where you know really returns are coming if you are an institutional investor then you can look at you know these uh, sdls you know uh, the state development loans they are uh, significantly giving 8 8.5% which is also good uh so debt funds uh but they can also wind up there is a risk involved in debt funds also uh ipos is good irctc ipo i must refer you could you could end up making 150 100 200% return in ipos and see news is there you know if you read it regularly this was the news you should subscribe to it and from 1000 rupees it went up to 1950 rupees so this is rial stock so you know final take last minute i like to spend these are the different asset classes which was to be focused today and i feel real estate <clears throat> can give you wealth can give you wealth provided you buy the land when you buy a builder a builder flat already a lot of profit has been shared so you need to be very careful commodities are really doing good um, in fact you know in a recently we saw some commodities like cardamom are giving 300% return but commodities market is not for trading equities market is for return gold is of course we are doing very good mutual fund do not stop your sips derivatives only for um, the the experienced ones hedge funds or core institutional buyers bitcoins i will recommend although supreme court has lifted the ban but i would recommend not to go in for because government may come after your transactions artworks only for the rich and wealthy and finally structured products uh, there are many structured products but they have a particular object, uh, objective like differential voting right shares so you know if 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 you are looking for that kind of scheme then only with this sir i would like to end my you know uh, small discussion and and uh, you know you uh, handing over to you thank you thank thank you dr saurabh it was quite a motivating presentation done by you and very comprehensive and uh, easy to understand for a common investor and now he can decide which line he would like to join in there or he would like to try uh, to uh, invest there and with this friends i would like to come to the another area another uh, asset class real estate real estate investments earlier were we, we used to always say that invest in real estate as you rightly said dr k invest in a plot in a land not in the building and one can never go wrong even if you buy a little expensive doesn't matter three months down the line or six months down the line it will you will find it is cheaper and even if you have to shed some extra money but today's scenario is one needs to understand and for that we have none better than mr rajiv talwar ceo and whole time director of dlf limited a wonderful person i know him 
he has 35 years of experience and i thought that i know him for 35 years okay uh, <clears throat> former ias officer blue eyed boy and blue eyed friend of everybody always very helpful anybody who went to him he always helped and he, he will never tell his habit of helping people you call him he will say you know i just you hold the line and he will call the person on the other line that there is such and such friend on this line i want you to meet him please and that is the way he used to do he will never say i will talk and i'll come back to you so this was his style always and i believe it is still the same he uh, he has been a banker also with state bank of india he worked in 76 and now he is whole time on real estate sector and that also with dlf the top corporate of the uh, country and uh, i am seeing that he is doing lot of value addition to this corporate and this corporate is going growing and going day by day going northwards uh, rajiv ji we would be very happy to know your perception about this particular asset class and how do you see at it how do you look at it and how do you see the potential going forward uh, thank you for our investors um, i i do confess that yes it's been my pleasure to know him for about four decades not only him but uh, also a former asocham president mr anil agrawal the dearest of friends the two of them are and i have the privilege of knowing them for about four decades it's my very proud privilege but i'm actually thankful to him for this webinar today believe me if i could keep quiet i would love to do that and that's why you'll find me speaking very little because whether it was mr soma sundram or shivan shivan shru or professor saurabh i think this has been a great learning experience from me individually and i'm sure it is equally useful to every person who is attending this webinar of course we were uh, having been a bureaucrat and uh, i do know that we are quite responsible for hoping to keep real estate and gold in parallel we also create a shortage of real estate and thereby see that the prices go up very high now that i've shifted to dlf we try and do the other thing that buy land when it is at a lower price do a legacy pricing and then add value to it and hopefully leave plenty on the table for buyers i think uh, it's a very good asset class it's one of the biggest investments that you can make in your lifetime and everyone i know of some friends um, it's just a story that there's a very major law firm which does not take a case against us only for the reason that when he bought land in gurgaon to begin with what he paid for 500 square yards a few years ago one square yard was equal to that so with the result that if in even if in 20 25 years it's gone up 500 times it's a fair return and only as a matter of great you know gratitude he had given an un, unwritten uh come up command that no cases they've given me plenty but i think that also depends on the fact that yes you have to choose i personally feel that there are that this is still a good buy because prices for almost a decade have been languishing or or they've been constantly keeping well in in relation to the inflation therefore it's a good time to step in there especially for young people the government has come out with very many schemes for young people i don't think artwork or gold or silver the young are not really so much concerned with it but i think to buy their first apartment or a second apartment and especially for the millennial generation which is a very highly mobile generation the lure of gold the lure of commodities the lure of financial instruments can never be lessened i think that's something which accounts for a, a huge huge uh, market and heaven i mean be kind to us that thanks to all of you you created such wonderful avenues of investment 
that whenever the amounts are small and manageable to whatever best extent they can do they should invest in whatever you are recommending because that's uh, that's really what makes the economy tick and grow whether it is shares whether it's mutual funds or any kind of instrument or even commodities and bullion of course but i would really recommend for the young who are coming into the market that there should be a paradigm change real estate has not really been in the most favorable light over the past decade because of the experience which people have had and that i think is due to over leveraging and perhaps excessive risk taking by developers so many are getting sifted out and there will be a there will be a huge change in the entire scenario but for smaller housing whether it is 300 square feet with the 600 or 1000 or 2 to 4000 even larger ones depending on the appetite and the investable surplus it is still a great investment opportunity and i would really recommend it for the for women first of all the kind of security that gets in and if you've seen the pandemic you know everyone has seen the migrant population and hordes of migrants you you seen the kind of human issue that was raised you are all dealing with it have you ever seen anyone who has a home even a good stable rented home leaving that is how your services continued and i think there is a huge potential line for two things in future which will come about one will be housing and therefore growth of business commercial and retail over the years number two will be something which we really haven't seen very much which is rental housing all of you know what oyo did to hotel rooms it's time that india actually plan to make about 4 to 5 crore different sizes because demand will be in different sizes homes all over and get into the rental mode we've been saying it for about 2 years and we're very happy that uh, you know the prime minister has announced this policy last week there will be many coming in and i'm sure with your brains there will be a new asset class which will be generated which will be rental housing which becomes like a paper commodity it's what finance paper does and what financial holdings do and there been some very innovative things like digital gold which was coming with which was being talked about similarly there will be a concept of rental housing it will come up all over the country and we have a very small portion of rental housing in this nation today that is a big growing factor and i would rec really recommend that anyone if bank rates are going down and interest rates are going down then it's a very good asset class to partake in especially for the young and of course old have to do it because they have to provide for their old age benefit and maybe if the government can actually make that just one simple change which is what is given as a maintenance allowance per annum which is 30% right now if it is raised to 50 either for women or for senior citizens i think that will provide a very good avenue for investment but uh, i would really love to hear all of you because i i'm quite certain that Uh, there should be a paradigm change that earlier we were talking about there should be sales of homes after they are completed so that there is no question of cheating anyone there is no hard or sad experience that any buyer will have but with these times and the pandemic i am sure launches will get much more frequent if rates come down of interest then this is again a very good buy right now but of course With, i mean who can compete with the sentimental security which gold provides which financial instruments provide so i'm sure we are all in a competing paradigm and may competition bring the best whether it is commodities or whether it is gold or whether it is financial instruments and the big stock exchanges because that is where 
wealth really grows well and they are very well regulated in india for the moment but the government has introduced the rera which is the real estate regulation act and hopefully there will be no major cases at all in the near future or in the long term for people being cheated of their money and therefore buying property wherever you don't have any and especially for the young who can change jobs from city to city but owning one is a must especially i think the class of people you are where it is very often a stigma if you know families don't last a family i mean a nuclear family doesn't last and a girl has to say that i want to get back home i think the new trend should be that ladies and girls should own homes and if there is ever a breakup the man must be told to move out she must get her security and emotional security and financial security as a permanent feature so i i do think that real estate like gold will be the long lasting a long lasting asset but uh, with the market going deeper and deeper into the stocks i think that's a very good thing for india and we should all be proud of the people including dhirubhai who actually began the middle class investment revolution in this country and all of you are partakers of that so i would rather listen to you and get some knowledge from you for my personal thing but i wish my family could also be asked to hear i'm sure they would turn out to be wiser but i'll try to get a i'll try to get a recording of this entire webinar to show it to everyone it's that good a webinar thank you chunu it's been really great being here thank you so much thank you very much but if your family would have been here finally you would have been buying some gold this evening i swear yes you are correct <laughs> <laughs> no i have two small clarifications real estate development is a nation building thing what is one great wish you have from the government if they give it to this industry then this industry can prosper very well and grow very well is there anything to do with taxation of the thing or uh, dealing with real estate selling and buying procedure should be simplified what is that one thing and second thing when you say investment allowance should be made 30 to 50% does this mean the building value or it is including the land value Uh, no it's not an investment allowance it's the maintenance allowance for rental housing maintenance allowance yes 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 that is normally 30% of your annual rent i think if that annual is increased rent. okay increased from 1 or 2% your return on that will go to 4 to 6% and that will be a great incentive and that mm -hmm. one great want or desire which i have is that i think last year they had reduced gst to something like mm -hmm. 5 for 1 1% mm -hmm. for affordable housing is perfect because that is mm -hmm. without a tax credit but 5% mm -hmm. all other and not being not being uh, given to uh, in without input tax credit i think is not a very a very wise thing for the for nation building i think mean, we introduced gst for the sake of a tax trail so therefore the older system which was there for whether it is residential retail or commercial including properties which are leased out there should be a 12% gst with one third abatement for land value and with input tax credit i think it's very essential if we have to see revenues of the nation rise then it must actually be that we we should be collecting about maybe 20 lakh to 30 lakh crores on gst alone it's reached about 1 lakh crores per month but i think it's it it is undoubtedly something which should reach about 2 and a half lakh lakh crores per month and it must go up because we must achieve something like half a trillion dollars worth of revenue and that that should be a a huge ask for the people therefore i really feel that gst is a very major game changer it's the best reform that has come about in this country since independence and we need to have a hard look at it so that the tax trail is never lost great thank you very much for sharing your wisdom with us and our investor friends and we really appreciate that you could spare this time for us and now friends i would like to come to another uh, set class called mutual fund investments which is also very very popular and uh, we normally say 
म्यूचुअल फंड इन्वेस्टमेंट सही है कितना सही है आई वुड लाइक टू नो फ्रॉम मिस्टर विक्रम मिस्टर विक्रम धवन इज ए फंड मैनेजर एट निपन इंडिया म्यूचुअल फंड he has two decades experience with him and for managing funds etc and risk management and investing in corporate and banking sectors in india so mr vikram dhawan would you be so kind to share your perception with our investor friends on mutual funds investments and how pre covid and post covid what kind of difference you see there what kind of changes are required what kind of balancing is required okay thank you very much for the kind introduction sir and uh, thank you all the speakers it's been amazing hearing all of you um i think uh, mutual funds and the exchanges perform a very important role in the economy you know they are the conduit which you know disperse the uh, the surplus money or the surplus uh um, savings lying with the small investors into very productive you know uh, avenues like <clears throat> equities or bonds which are again used by the promoters or the government to grow the economy to build the economy to create infrastructure etc we are we i mean we and the exchanges play a very important role in being that conduit now uh, i think <clears throat> the most important aspect of investing is that you know you should be aware what kind of investor you are uh, you know if as i say if you don't know where you're going you might end up anywhere so most importantly before you look at anything whether it is mutual fund or whether it is pms or whether it is broking or whatever is very important to you know analyze yourself what kind of investor you are what are your expectations from the investment type from mutual funds or mix whatever wherever you are investing so so you know you can basically divide investors into three categories the the, the tactical investor the, the the speculator as we call it i mean they are looked down upon but poor guys they are the ones who provide liquidity in the exchanges then you have the uh, you know the people who are asset class agnostic purely you know focused on absolute returns so they'll invest into anything that moves you know for them gold equity or bonds are same as long as they are fulfilling their investment objectives then there is a third class of investor which is which believes in asset allocation which believes in portfolio diversification now this third class has become more relevant after you know the 2000 the more crisis we have seen the more as the more value of asset allocation people have seen now since uh, you know um, the 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 forum is more about gold so i will just take give it a gold angle i don't want to take too much of time it's already quarter to 6 in the evening maybe i'll spend a few few minutes how people should look at gold and why they should look at gold in the in 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 the portfolio but coming from a mutual fund point of perspective this one thing which i would like to tell that most of you would be confused that whilst the economy <clears throat> appears to be doing very not pretty good but then you have the stock markets across the world which are going up so i think first of all as an investor you need to understand that the economy and the stock markets are not always the same thing now i'll give an i'll give you an example <clears throat> in a village <clears throat> sorry in a village that may be poor but you could still have two people doing extremely well similarly in a country which may not be doing extremely well you could still have a bunch of people who are doing extremely well and you may want to invest in their business so this is what our job is to find these gems amongst the whole you know the as they say from just to separate the wheat from chaff but i think i would not like to go into the other other aspect but i would like to summarize it in this way that today the markets are controlled by central banks we we are no longer uh, a market which is a classical market there are no textbooks to explain what's happening in the market right now it's the central banks you know there are central banks in japan who are even buying equities the us central bank has started buying bonds even our own central bank reserve bank has provided so much of liquidity so we are living in very very different different times and uh, you know 
any any rule book any textbook unfortunately may not help to a certain what may happen in the future and that is where gold has become extremely important and i'll throw a very um, very uh, interesting statistics at you that whether it was 2001 or 2008 or 2020 there were two two trends which were exactly similar in 2001 gold bottomed out few months before dow jones or equities and then rallied for six years close to 240% uh, i mean i beg your pardon som sir and uh, jindal sir because you are you guys are much more capable in gold than me if i get it a bit wrong similarly in 2008 similar thing happened gold bottomed out few months before dow jones uh, went on a three year almost a three year bull run 100 170 or percent similarly if you look at the month of march in 2020 again gold bottomed out a good week and 10 days before dow jones bottomed out and since then there there, there there's been a race between the two uh, 20 or percent from there so why this has happened this is very important to understand first of all why people have become focused on gold i'll take you 20 years back 20 years back when the asian crisis asian currency crisis happened when the so called tiger economies of of asia like uh, thailand uh, malaysia indonesia etc they ran out of dollars they ran out of foreign exchange and they had to default on their obligation at that time in the late 90s the thinking was that dump gold and buy dollars so for for a very long time the central banks across the world the investors across the world world were dumping gold and buying dollars and that is why if you see that era of mid 90s to late 90s to early 2000 you'll see that gold has done extremely badly you saw the gold bottom uh, in 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 2000s in fact there's a very interesting story in a very lighter way i like to you know i like to take some liberty in use of words that the 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 bottom of the gold was made when the uk treasury decided to dump out of their gold uh, and at that time uh, you know they dumped the gold at all time low of 300 or 2 300 odd dollars per ounce uh, considering today we are at 1800 and the person who was responsible for doing that was the then prime minister of uk gordon brown and which is now affectionately called as a brown bottom of the gold so since then uh, what people saw in 2001 and 2008 and 2020 what you are seeing that the sanctity of dollar cannot be taken for granted when the problem will come the cent the federal reserve will print money i mean the, the money printed in 2001 and 2008 has still not been drained in i mean you must have heard about this term called paper tantrum when the federal reserve of usa wanted to recall the stimulus in 2011 and 2015 i mean i we this Leave aside the world. I mean, the the Nifty and Rupee went for a huge toss at that point of time. So you know, unfortunately, and today we are looking at 10 trillion moving towards 12 trillion dollars of stimulus. So you know, there's a very good possibility after the next boom, when the next bust comes, we would have not paid for the 2001, 2008, and 2020 um, you know crisis. So the world, unfortunately, the world has found the cure for debt, and it is more debt. So we are becoming more indebted. and the central banks the government across the world will be forced to keep the interest rate lows to keep the co- the cost of debt servicing and whenever the interest rates are low the opportunity cost of holding gold is becomes attract uh, becomes uh, uh, almost nil because gold doesn't pay you any dividend vikram ji vikram dividend. ji vikram ji, yeah. vikram ji you are dealing with so many investors all the time you have dealt so many with so many investors all through, all through your life i want to know your idea of investing suppose you have 100 rupees investable surplus now after this pandemic where will you put this money in today's world in, in today's uh, uh, ecosystem so i think it's very important to understand asset allocation and uh, not all asset classes will run together there will be a equity bull run it may not be accompanied by a gold or a bond bull run you are uh, you will have to do asset allocation now obviously you have to understand which part of the cycle is there are various factors if you are in a deflationary cycle it's a time to invest vikram more ji, in debt vikram ji i want to know where you will put your 100 rupees 
Okay, so first of all, uh, as, as mutual fund employ, uh, employees, we are not allowed to give direct advice to the uh, investors. So please don't do whatever I'm saying, don't do it tomorrow. <laughs> but I think as, as of now, I would go by what so mentioned in terms of gold allocation, 10 to 15 percent. I would also go for, uh, uh, you know, out of that 100 rupees, 10 to 15 rupees will be gold. And uh, rest 85 percent will be split between debt and equity. Now, it all depends upon what is your risk appetite. If you are somebody who has a high risk appetite, then you should be having higher equity allocation, maybe, you know, 50% allocation in equity and maybe 35 in debt or 60 or 25. If you are having a low uh, risk appetite, then it should be maybe, you know, 20, 30 in equity and, uh, you know, rest in debt. But sir, uh, I like to add one more thing, which is very important to the discussion. It is not as simple as how much money we will put in what most important thing is when to sell when to switch that is more important because we are not living in a static world it is not that today you can create a perfect portfolio there is no perfect portfolio today if, if i put let us say i put 50 rupees in equity and 20 in debt and 30 in gold i have to review it every quarter i have to review it every year because things will change if if the inflation is going up i need more gold and equities if there's a deflationary environment I need more debt, less equity, and less gold. So I think it is it, it is it is a moving target. Your question, the answer would be a moving target, and I would have a different answer three to six months down the line. So it's very important to understand where each asset class is in terms of price points, in terms of its cycle, and then make an investment into it. Mr. Vadva, I would like to bring you in at this time. Tell me, please, Mr. Vadva is Managing Director of SKI Capital and he is my colleague at SHM. Uh, he is uh, handling uh, investment committee, investment and capital market committee of SHM. Uh, I would like to know your perception about investors. What would you like to say and what, would you, what kind of wisdom you would like to share with them in today's post-COVID scenario? Where should they put their money? Where should they invest their money in? Thank you, Jindaza. And thank you. And I compliment SOCHAM for you know, coming up with the, with the topics and doing webinars regularly. Uh, generally, as I have listened, and uh, it was a pleasure listening to experts on various asset classes, I can say that we all know that no asset class can be defined as a right or wrong. To invest it's all based on the investor's objective and needs and preferences uh, pros and cons of each asset class needs to be investigated before investing um, as far as as you have asked uh, the, the question to every panelist the how much you will invest i am coming from equity market which is a riskier asset and it's a old wisdom that you deduct 100 your age from the 100 that should go to the riskier class suppose i am 55 so 45 percent of my total wealth allocation should be towards riskier asset this is a old wisdom and as far as covid is concerned we all know is an unprecedented unprecedented time with the uncertainty in the world it will be natural for investors to do some reallocation as our topic suggests the rational expectation will be that it might, uh, they might rebalance from physical asset to financial asset, more so to, towards equity. Uh, as uh, my uh, BSC, Mr. Samir Patel has said, just mentioned, in last three months, we have seen 14 lakh accounts being opened uh, in the equity market, which is a record of itself because all along we have been saying that we are a country of 130 crore, but still we have 2.5 crore DMAT account. And normally in any developing country, this figure is not less than 15%. But what we have seen in last three months, we can say that we'll re, uh, we can cope up with the other developing worlds also. As far as, as every expert has mentioned and uh, taken a subject of respective class, uh, I'll, uh, I'll just mention one part of gold which we have missed. This is sovereign gold bonds being offered by the government, which carries interest of 2.5%. And I assume that 
many of our listeners and audience today are first time investor so if one has to go for a gold this is a good option one should look at uh, traditionally gold is considered as a important and a must investment in india uh, and india continues to be the major and the biggest consumer of gold especially in the uncertain world when all central banks are printing currency one can look at gold as a valid investment as mr uh, rajiv talwar ji and uh, we did one program for phd also uh, mr talwar if you remember in uh, when you were president of phd we did same topic uh, the covid was not there then we were discussing that you know in india especially north india people have created their wealth from real estate i right. confess that my most of the wealth although my younger generation the, the my children say that it is skewed towards real estate but we have created our wealth through uh, real estate so one must not miss this real estate which has been languishing for last 10 years and as he has uh, rightly pointed out that for a younger one once you have your own house you can concentrate on other wealth and other asset classes so one must first first of all uh, look at real estate or you know investing in his or her own house this is my submission and other part like uh, there are other revenue also in real estate like we have reit uh, which is again a instrumentalization of the uh, real estate asset although we don't have much of the offering in reit but going forward as government is quite serious about reit and invest this again is going to be another uh, asset class of its own so one can look at reit and invest also in in sub category of uh, a real estate as far as uh, uh, this mutual fund as uh, uh, mr vikram dhawan has said i assume many of us many of our audience are first time investors so equity is a riskier class if one has to invest in equity class and it's just beginning to enter in the market best way to do it is through mutual fund only so i'll i'll just suggest that first time investor should take a route of mutual fund and there are very 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 good uh, investment uh, fund managers uh, down there who can manage your money so these are the major uh, asset classes but we have to see that you know these asset classes uh, there are certain factor which has to uh, one has to look at one is the risk appetite of a person that there are people who are just risk averse so equity is not for them equity especially uh, uh, for a long term uh, long term investment though equity is the right asset as you must you have also asked uh, uh, some panelists which is the which asset class has given the best return so it is equity which has given over a period of time best return in last 10 years equity has given you a return of 15 to 16% whereas in uh, gold it has given you a return of 8.8 to 9% so over a longer term equity is uh, definitely a uh, very good investment uh, asset class But risk appetite has to be seen as one of my uh, few days back i was listening to cnbc they were saying that there are new investor but they are all punting so all uh, the sports punters are in the equity market they are punting in the market so but this uh, if volatility is your game then equity is for a short term a short term is uh, is a good class and you can get the excitement but for a longer and serious money to be made in the markets or uh, in various asset classes i would recommend uh, equity uh, through direct investment or through mutual fund but equity is the best investment jindal ji thank you thank you narendra ji thank you for sharing your wisdom with us uh, now i would like to invite in mr navin mathur is director commodities and currencies anand rati shares and stock brokers limited with 25 years of great experience in financial markets uh, dealing with cross section of the investors all the products uh, navin ji i would like to know your perspective on how to take and how are you dealing with these uh, new investors 
currently during the covid period and after, now nowadays so uh, can we hear from you uh, your perception on the subject uh, thank you very much jindal ji and thank you sr uh, cham yeah, it's been pleasure here listening to all the speakers uh, for the last one and a half hours or so we are just on the finishing stages of this particular webinar i won't take much of a time uh, i have uh, heard the learned people uh, mr soma sundaram yourself uh, vikram ji and uh, mr rajiv talwar including uh, mr narendra wa samir and shivanchu from the exchanges uh, uh new which uh, uh, uh which uh, which i would have to say uh, uh, a sharp perspective uh, definitely is what we are seeing a change in the trend from the last couple of uh, i would say years is that the people are moving uh, from the traditional model of uh, investing uh, uh, to a kind of an innovative model of investing uh, uh, there are risk takers for the profile of the people and there are people who don't to take too much of a risk and they are risk averse uh, people asset classes uh, which people would like to invest it with as uh, vikram ji has rightly pointed out it depends on the scenario we have seen 2012 2008 uh, uh, when the gold touched the lows to a 1920 dollar levels too again uh, from a stagnant of 80 uh, say around 1200 dollars we have seen prices moving up to an extent of 1800 plus dollars too so i think it it largely is based upon you where you are and this is that particular scenario you should be uh, wise enough to invest your corpus invest your disposable incomes invest surplus income of whatever you have uh, uh, to judiciously to the different asset classes if you really ask me uh, the value investing as uh, as uh, as uh, sort of like he said is is one of the good things to to look out for uh, in case of the equity markets everybody would not do pretty well all the equity stocks would not do pretty well you should be very confident enough on a certain sector on a certain stocks which is value investing a blue chip out of the particular sector to be invested with everybody would not do well means uh, all the sectors would languish i feel uh, for quite some time now and particularly the hospitality industry uh, would languish but education sector the pharma sector is pretty good uh, to be invested in. and that too a gem that particular sector would do well for you i am been in commodities and currencies for last uh, 14 15 years uh, thick and thin on that uh, everybody has talking about gold and i think uh, gold is not to be seen as an asset class uh, uh, for uh, for the downtime i think it is an asset class uh for the better risk adjusted return as som said in the initial remarks of the presentation so i think uh, uh, the debt the gold and the equity mutual funds or the equity direct asset uh, investments would be great subject to that you know what you are doing uh, and uh, you know what your profile is what your risk appetite is as vadva ji rightly said so i won't take much of time uh, there i am the last speaker in the entire conversation people have spoken their wisdoms with that particular note i thank you uh, for inviting uh, me on this particular platform thanks a lot you navin ji you may not be last but you are always with us and we are thankful to you that you, you. whenever we request you you never say no to us uh, as a final word i would like you to reply some questions uh, all the panelists i would request i read the questions from the audience one by one and if you could kindly reply first question is want to know best investment option in covid 19 situation that is mutual fund ppf or bonds who would like to take this question please health is a better option professor sorry in uh, during Somebody covid said, you said so i said health is a better option neither stocks nor gold nor uh, anything <laughs> and at what at what at what price one should be looking at buying it invaluable i should say <laughs> <laughs> thank you professor you wanted to say something yes so so it depends upon your wealth level if your wealth level is low i i would recommend invest put particularly in real estate in ppf kind of in fixing fixed interest earning uh, monthly P, uh, mis if your wealth level is significantly growing up and it is at a comfortable level then you should invest 
extensively in equities and and debt funds so practically where you stand in the wealth continuum you need to take a call thank you and next like question is you, uh, sir i so, like to add one yes here. mr vikram yes um, mr vikram i think uh, it's not just the economic crisis it is the uncertainty which is uh, plaguing the market so you may want to look at if you're looking towards mutual fund you may want to look at diversified fund and anyway you should have a diversified portfolio because we don't know how the world will look like 6 months 1 year down the line vikram ji if somebody ask me i will say mutual fund because i am using them for last 30 years and i'm happy with it that's very nice to hear sir thank you very much for your kind comments 19 1990 i started using mutual fund group wow next question uh, future of equity shares and mutual fund which investment is better at this juncture equity shares and mutual fund so similar one uh, can we say mutual fund all the panelists i think sir uh, i if if you are able to actively see uh, follow the market on day to day basis then maybe you can go for direct equity but if you are busy in your life and your work you don't have time then i and you cannot uh, you know uh, give time and resources to it so it's better to leave it to the mutual fund and uh, that's how i think you should look at it that's my personal view thank you next question is for dr rajiv talwa what are the barometers of prediction of normal earner to choose real estate to buy home keeping aside his monthly expenditure how much he should start investing and in which shall i say it again no no perfectly okay sir i think the okay. best scheme is it's a very major investment if you have anything like 5 or 10 lakhs to invest please buy a home worth 50 lakhs or anything below that because banks give you a large amount of loan at a concessional rate and also because the government of india has provided a scheme where by you almost get that 2 and a half lakhs which is an annual annual uh, emi uh, emi is put 12 well, emi is put together are tax exempted and therefore in about 20 years time a 50 lakh home will almost come to you with tax exemptions free of cost with just 10 lakhs of rupees rajiv ji gold and real estate both come from the earth which one first बड़े लोग कह के गए हैं कि पहले घर होना चाहिए उसके बाद गोल्ड होना चाहिए घर होगा तो आप बचे रहेंगे और उसके बाद अगर कुछ है तो फिर गोल्ड भी ले सकते हैं तो बड़े लोगों को तो हमेशा पसंद था घर अपना होना चाहिए मैं आपको भी बड़ा मानता हूं और नरेंद्र जी को भी बड़ा मानता हूं उन्होंने पहले दोनों ने आपने कहा है कि पहले घर लो उसके बाद सोना भी आ ही जाएगा जी सोना भी और चांदी भी आ जाएगी घर से जो खुशी घर से मिलती है किसी और चीज से नहीं मिलती actually financial and emotional security comes from there sir and happiness also if you don't have your own house to stay kahin dimag mein wo ghusa rehta hai ki hum rental usme bahut temporary kaam mein chal rahe hain aur agar yeah. aapne koi property le li hai to ek stability aa jati hai life mein 50% of your life gets covered by that correct and then you can change your town go to another place and stay in a rented house there's no hmm. problem you can change your hmm. job you can rented homes but ek ghar zarur hona chahiye jisko apna keh sako jitna bhi chhota ho aur india ke context mein bilkul theek hai ye thank you uh next question is mr samir for you especially can we also know what opportunities beyond gold beyond gold bhi duniya hai ke nahi yes sir there are lot of opportunities uh, in fact uh, uh, for uh, for the investors uh, in fact uh, before going to other opportunities i would like to thank uh, vadwa ji also because i missed out on the sovereign gold bond and what an opportunity it's uh, and vadwa ji thank you so much for covering that where is this coming from okay not a issue acha now what final word if somebody wants to say something otherwise i would like to call it a day because we i am already running a little bit out of time so any final jindal, word if you jindal, want to add jindal jindal ji two minutes ji. Uh, ji. i would like to thank you for the session and inviting us vsc on the, to be a part of this panel 
then my by the pleasure. entire panelist uh, we i really enjoyed it, it was nostalgic in speaking uh, listening to all of you and uh, vikram uh, took me 20 years down the line he spoke about uh, central bank uh, selling goal and i remember those days because you know bank of england through the cbga selling gold in tons and uh, gold uh, making a low of almost 250 dollars per try ounce and i still carry that cutting with me from economic times where, uh, where there was an article saying gold might come down to 100 dollars per try ounce as well and that is the day today and we are at 1900 900 dollars but uh, vikram is last smiling like everything so uh, <laughs> so and he and uh, very very articulately touched on those points 2001 2008 uh, subprime and then 2015 Uh, I mean, it was nostalgic. The um, uh, he took me uh, down the memory lane. So thank you, thank you so much for that. Thank you. Anybody else want to say something, or we call it a day? All uh, right. So one thing. Yes. So one one thing I like to say that uh, the commodity asset class has been uh, given a step motherly treatment or a step fatherly treatment. So it's very excellent on your part to you know host such. grand seminars on commodities and real real estate obviously everybody knows about it so yeah i mean from the community of commodities i would like to thank assetcam and you for having such a grand uh, especially uh, you know, at this time thank you very much for that so thanks for inviting me vikram we did our first conference on uh, commodities in 1995 at assetcam wow when there was no exchange no online this thing we started at at associum 1995 we did first conference so associum is fully committed to all these uh, things and we did gold 2002 first one and others also so associum has been doing great job on uh, all these subjects of interest to the trade and industry and i appreciate and i thank you each one of you personally for sparing this time for us so chance thanks a lot and thanks to our thank audience you. who has uh, you, been with us all this time thank, thank, you. You. thank, thank you. you thank you bye thank you thank you hena